used the thing in the mountain scrubs on there. Chasing the deer. Well, mate, no, I've just landed down here in Hobart. Very interesting uh, flight down here. It was pretty great. Uh, it was pretty good because all the way down here we had very clear visibility and uh, it gave me a chance to see the contrast. And I'd suggest anybody that gets a chance in clear weather, get in from somewhere up in North Queensland and fly down to Tassie, have a look at the countryside you fly over and you'll see the, um, how close the suburbia is to um, the wild country, the uh, bushland. Sometimes it's right one side of a river to the other. And uh, you'll see quite clearly that the uh, landowners that are on uh, the improved country, that are right next to state land and uh, big mountains, um, yeah, they've got a problem all around them. And if we, as recreational hunters, aren't a part of the solution, we'll be part of the problem as well. Just before dark, we're heading up into the highlands here of Tasmania to have a look around the fallow deer country. Now, a lot of people have been saying to me that they said, why don't we do things in Queensland like they do in Tasmania? Well, it's completely different states, it's a completely different situation. However, if we are going to see an example of a really good system for management of uh, deer and other species, I think Tasmania is the first place to start looking. Uh, when I was told, come on down here, this is going to be beautiful, uh, somebody didn't tell me about snow and sleet and ice and rain. Snow is beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. This is lovely. Just lovely. This is just like Queensland, only different. sort of conditions that these Tassie boys have got to work in keeping possums, wallabies and deer under control. Certainly glad to get in out of the snow into uh, front of the fire here and uh, hot cup of coffee. Uh, Tasmania, I've been down here now oh, probably five times um, and uh, that's over the last probably 30 years. It's a magnificent state, lovely people and uh, yeah just a great place to visit. We're down here to look at the, uh, the deer, um, look at the situation, there's been a lot of people uh, in Queensland especially on social media that have been uh, going on there how we need to get access into state forest areas to hunt and I'm in agreement with that but they've been suggesting that we need a, a system like say America or we need a system like New Zealand or we need it like Victoria or New South Wales or whatever. You know, over the years my favourite system in the country has been the Tasmanian system. Uh, I had a lot to do with Brian Murphy, who came over many years ago to set up a management plan here as a biologist from Georgia in America. And he worked with the Tasmanian Deer Advisory Committee and the, the uh, Tasmanian farm, farmers and graziers to come up with a permit system. Uh, I don't think it's ever been properly recognised the, um, the positive effect that uh, his influence has had on deer management in this country. Now, uh, what I'll try and do is give you a bit of the uh, information behind the Tasmanian system and why I think it's so good. And uh, maybe, possibly, in the future, we might be able to see something similar to this set up in our own state of Queensland. For a start, one of the things we've got to take into account when we're comparing say Queensland with uh, Tasmania. Population of Tasmania, I think, from uh, rough, using rough figures, is under 500,000 people. And of that, there's around the 350,000 adults. Now, when you take into account that there's over 70,000 gun licenses uh, issued in Tasmania, you realise that, that hunting and shooting in Tasmania is a 
Yeah, it is a cultural pursuit. It is, it is part of uh, everyday life here for Tasmanians. One thing you'll notice when you're traveling around is the abundance of wildlife. And uh, when you take into account, they've got two species of wallaby, uh, one gray roo, they've also got the wombats and uh, Tassie devils, all this sort of stuff. And they are literally everywhere. They're, they're creating a big impact on the land of graziers and farmers down in this state. So it gives the ability for hunters to offset their uh, efforts and trade wallaby control, wallaby and possum control on lands of landowners uh, for hunting access for wild deer. Now, many years ago, poisons like 1080 were in widespread use across Tasmania for the control of species uh, like wallabies and possums. That's largely been put aside now uh, due to the efforts of recreational hunters who are working in conjunction with landowners to develop a far more sustainable system, a far better way of doing uh, this control work. Now what I'll try and show you now are the steps I went through before I arrived down here to go hunting. So okay, I applied for a game license uh, in Tasmania and it took just over a week to get it all sorted out. And what you get is this uh, game tracks book. Here is the uh, game license and uh, for reasons of confidentiality, I'll keep the address out of there. Um, so that came back and with it, you get this, this funky little card, great little laminated card uh, to carry with you. That's your game license. And uh, this book, we'll go through it in a minute. It's got a lot of the details. All you need to know is in that book. Okay, I was also allocated a uh, crop protection permit so I could take antlerless deer uh, with the aid of a spotlight and a vehicle, okay, to work on uh, freehold country of landowners down here. And also it allows me to take Bennett's wallabies, Rufus wallaby and brush-tailed possums uh, as part of that crop protection permit. All in all, it cost me just over $100 because I wanted to take home a few uh, skins of some of the uh, wallabies that uh, we were going to shoot. Uh, this meant I needed a wildlife export permit and this allows me to uh, take products of those species back to any state in the country. And with this game license, this um, gives you permission to hunt for these species on any uh, land that you have permission on. So that's that includes state forest land, as long as it's unallocated. And that is through the um, buck season, which is uh, which runs for about five weeks through March into early April. Uh, there was about 10 areas, I'm told, that were balloted out this year for um, during the buck season on state forest land. And I'm told there was about 500 positions offered in those ballots. During the antlerless part of the uh, season, um, many of these areas can be hunted, uh, but they have to be booked online. All bucks taken through the trophy season must be tagged with the tag issued to you with your license. We look closer at this Game Tracks magazine that you get with your license. Uh, everything's in there. Message from the minister how you go about purchasing a game license and your firearms license. Right up, um, as I said, everything is in there from uh, COVID-19 precautions, uh, the use of hunting dogs, hunting other species, you name it. One thing you notice straight away is the emphasis right through everything you do here of being a good hunter, being responsible. It even goes right down to uh, what you should do with uh, anything you're going to put on social media so you don't give us as hunters a bad name. And you must remember that if you get a game license by mid-November, you need to do your game license return. Uh, it's quite simple and this gives the information back to the people organising this whole system uh, so they can make it better for you in years to come. Previously, 
Uh, if you're shooting females, antlerless deer in uh, Tasmania, they uh, require there was a requirement for them to be tagged. But from this season onwards, uh, there is no tag requirement and uh, no limit on the amount of uh, animals that can be taken. Uh, but again, that depends on the uh, landowner's property and their management plan that they have in place. One thing that must be stressed about the antlerless deer season is this is basically through the winter months, but you can't hunt these females during the fawning season for obvious uh, animal welfare considerations. Now you can butcher your deer in the field, but if you do, all parts must be labelled. A lot of people don't realise that there was an aerial survey conducted during 2020 to determine the distribution and the abundance of wild fallow deer in uh, Tasmania. From this survey, the estimate was over 50,000 deer. Now, based on the data collected from this survey, the estimation that wild fallow deer in Tasmania were only increasing by between 5 and 6% per year, and that's going over the period of 2006 to 2019. And it showed there was a harvest of up to 30,000 deer each year. Without hunting in Tasmania, the wild fallow deer population could increase by up to 27% per year. So what this tells me is this system is working very well and recreational hunters and landowners are doing a pretty good job. And towards the end of the uh, booklet, we've got the offender file. Now this is a really sad indictment on our fellow hunters. Well, they're not hunters. These guys are the poachers. These are the ones that are giving all of us a bad name. And it's great to see the names up in lights. This is what it's all about down here in Tasmania. Uh, they've got an increasing population of, of fallow deer, but from what I've seen, hunters and landowners have got them under control. They have got them this close to being under control. But the, the trick now will be to perfect the techniques that they've already got in place so that they can harvest more of these animals and keep the situation in balance. Beautiful fallow doe here taken on a lovely crisp morning uh, yeah fantastic other people out in the field couldn't be better we can learn from this system as we develop something for our own Queensland situation